Hey guys and welcome to Nickrit. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to make this really cute bumblebee amigurumi. My intro is gonna be a little bit longer for a second. Um, I kind of need to explain uh, why I haven't been able to post this. This is actually the fourth time that I am attempting this video, thus the three bees that are already fully formed in this little shot here. Uh, I also have a different camera. If you haven't noticed, it looks a lot better, but um, the world gives and the world takes. Just as I got a new camera, my computer has decided, my 10 year old computer, my MacBook, my baby, has decided that it no longer wants to export any videos because it is too old. And because the software is just being finicky and not pleasant and it's just being a pain in the butt. So I'm going to attempt to edit this on the phone that I just got. And uh, I'm gonna be doing a Kickstarter for a new laptop for the channel. So, um, stay tuned for that. I'm going to link everything down below. If you're interested in donating to that, don't feel pressured to at all because I understand that now is a crazy time, but I just, I love making videos and honestly, I don't know how often I'm going to be able to make them on my phone. Who knows? Maybe it'll end up being easier. I just haven't gone through the editing process completely with this new thing. So it's going to be a little bit different than what I usually do. And I'm not gonna be able to do the little add-ons that I usually do, like putting the pattern up on the screen. So what I'm going to wind up doing is just using my tablet, which is currently updating, but it won't be by the time that I get around to doing the pattern. So I'm gonna use my tablet, try to show you what the pattern looks like on the PDF. We have a printable PDF that is gonna be linked down below on our Ravelry. So if you are interested in following along that way, that's gonna be down below as well. All right, let's get started. All right, for this project, you're going to need a size D3 or a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I am using a Susan Bates. You can use whatever size you want or whatever brand you want. Just keep in mind that the smaller the hook you use, the smaller your stitches and thus the smaller the holes in your stitches are going to look in your amigurumi. But you cannot go too far down, so you can't use like a size zero millimeter because otherwise it's going to start kind of pulling and looking weird. So just find the smallest crochet hook that you're um, comfortable with using that you may have at home and use that and try to get the proper tension that you're looking for. You might want to play around with this for a little bit, but generally I use a D3 or a 3.25 millimeter, but you've got like a three or a 3.5. It's not going to make or break your amigurumi piece. I'm also going to be using some Darning needles, I say some because I know I'm going to lose this one before I end up at the end of this project. I end up losing them and finding them alternately all throughout the project that I'm working on. You're also gonna need some polyfill. I am not gonna be using a crazy amount. If you purchase or have half a pound even, that'll make a ton of these little bees. So there's that. I'm also gonna be using some worsted weight yarn. In today's video, I'm gonna be using Vanna's Choice. I like Vanna's Choice with smaller amigurumi like this uh, because it's a little bit plushier and it kind of makes my small amigurumi just look slightly larger than um, if I'm using Karen Simply Soft or Red Heart Soft, but if that's all you have, go for it. It's not gonna like really change how your amigurumi looks. That's just my preference. I'm using black white and mustard in Vanna's Choice today. I'm also going to be using um, some safety eyes. These are 15 millimeter safety eyes, but if you just have some thread or if you want to embroider your eyes, that is also a possibility. What I like about the safety eyes is that on the opposite side, there's a little cap that keeps these on so that they're not as likely to just pop off. I'm also using these adorable scissors, which again, I'm going to be doing uh, I'm going to be giving away some of these in a giveaway. I have been talking about this, but the quarantine's kind of made it hard for me to be able to get all the things that I wanted to do for the giveaway in the giveaway. So my 20k giveaway is probably going to be coming around by the time I hit 25k subscribers. And I'm going to be trying to do maybe something smaller than what I was going to do just because things are really hard to maintain and trying to get um, all the things that I want to get inside that giveaway is proving difficult. So, but luckily a lot of things are opening up now and my local shops, so we'll be seeing if I can get any of that. I've been trying really hard to do um, staying at home, and I think I've done curbside pickup at Joanne's once for a couple projects, so we'll be trying to do that. All right, those should be all the things that you need. Let's get started. All right, to start, I have a little printable PDF. 
on how to do this. So if you're interested in downloading this and following along, I'll have that right over on the description down below, the little doobly-doo that kind of describes what it is. I even have a really helpful chart. I custom make these um, and I do all the art and stuff for this PDF. I'm pretty proud of it, so I kind of just wanted to show it off. And also, typically I post the pattern right up here, so I'm going to kind of just follow along with it um, this way so that I can show it on screen while also sh telling you how we go about doing things. So take a screenshot if you need to see this, if you're not uh, able to download a PDF for whatever reason, or you're just not on Ravelry or you don't support Ravelry or whatever number of things are going out there for people. There's all kinds of different circumstances. So these are the patterns that I have. And then this is the thing for the wings. So go ahead and screenshot that if you're just interested in the pattern. Uh, first comes the mustard yarn. So I'm gonna put this over here for right now. Um, I usually show the pattern, that's why I posted that on there. Um, so I'm going to grab my mustard yarn. You're going to want to be comfortable with creating a slip knot. I'm going to grab my tail and pull that through. If you're not, I have beginner tutorials that are going to be uh, linked down below as well. Um, you're going to also want to be comfortable with um, single crocheting, increasing, decreasing, as well as um, working in the round and stuffing and all that stuff. So this is not a absolute beginner tutorial. This is going to be more like a, this is how you do this pattern. But if you are comfortable with doing these things, that's a good beginner project for people that have just gotten comfortable with doing these things, if that makes sense. So um, I'm going to create my magical ring, which the way that I do that is I'm going to chain one, chain two. And now that I've chained two, I'm going to go back inside my very first chain right here. I'm going to skip the second chain that I just made and go back into the very first one. And I'm going to place six single crochet inside that one chain here. So one, go back inside that same chain, two, go back inside that same chain, three, back inside four, back inside five and six. You'll notice that your magical ring has a giant hole in the center of it. That is fine, just pull your tail and that will close right up. We are going to turn our work and we're going to go inside that very first stitch that you created. So we're gonna go inside the front loop only. I find that this makes my amigurumi stitches look a bit more bubbly, which I like when it comes to my amigurumi. But if you go through both, that's fine. I just find that these pop a little bit better and that's why I'm only going through the front loop. That's this thing, falls everywhere. All right, so we're gonna go inside that front loop and put one stitch and then go back inside that same loop and put two stitches. We are increasing every single one of those original six stitches, every single one so that we're gonna get up to 12 stitches. So we're gonna go from six to 12 and then the next round we're gonna go 18 then the next round we're gonna go 24, and the next round we're gonna go 30. We're only gonna increase up to 30 stitches. In each round, we're only going to increase six uh, stitches each round, if that makes sense. That's what I'm talking about with this chart. Every time you do this little symbol here, that's the symbol for increase. You're going to be creating a stitch between each increase, and we're doing six of these every single round. I hope that makes sense. So now we are going to go inside the next stitch and do one. Go back inside the same second stitch here, two. We're gonna go inside the third stitch here, one. Back inside the same third stitch, two. One and two. So you can see there's polyfill everywhere. You can see one bump two bump. So one, two, one, and two. And I believe that should be 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We have 12 stitches now. 
just jostled the camera. Sorry about that. And now I'm going to kind of pull my stitch out right here and I'm going to go back inside that little hole and I'm going to grab my tail. You don't have to do this, but I like using my tail as a stitch marker instead of actually using a stitch marker because I find that I lose all my stitch markers all the time ever. So I'm going to take my hook, I'm going to grip that and kind of just pull it through so that I can tell where my stitches, um, so I can tell where my rounds end. So now we're going to single crochet one, increase, crochet one, increase, one, increase all the way around until we get 18 stitches on our next round. We are now on round three. We are trying to get to 18 stitches from 12. So one, two, and increase that second stitch. One, two, one, two, increasing again, one, two, I'm pulling polyfill everywhere with me as you can see there's just polyfill, one, eek, there we go. Two. And the last increase, because this is going to go right below where our last increase is going to go, so that's how I know where our last stitch is, and increase. I'm going to pull my tail out a little bit, I'm going to put my hook in, I'm going to pull where my tail was out, and then I'm going to let it go through where my last stitch is now. I keep moving my tail wherever my next round is, and that's how I keep track of my rounds. All right, so now we're at the beginning of round four. This is our one, two, three. We are now going to four, where we are going to be going from 18 stitches up to 24 stitches. And the way that we do that is we are going to increase on the third stitch. Um, so we're gonna single crochet one and two. And now on this third stitch, we are going to increase. So one and two within that same third stitch right there. So then again, one, two, trying not to split my yarn. I split my yarn all the time. Two, three. Oh wait, no, oops, oops. Yeah, no, those three, there you go. Three. One. Three and increase one, two, three, and increase one, two, three, and increase. And now we should have just one more increase right there. One, two, three, and increase. I'm gonna move my tail so that it is now going through my last increase here. Pull my yarn back. And now we are in round five where we're going to be doing our last increase round. This is going to be from 24 stitches, which is what's currently on our work here, and we're going to be going to 30 stitches. This is all we need for increasing. If you decide you want to make a bigger B, which you can do, you could do more increasing. So instead of having it end in 30 stitches, you could do 36 or 42 or 48. You can expand your um, increasing and just go around more when it comes to the body. That is a choice that you can do. Um, feel free to comment down below if you want kind of further explanation on that. So um, we are going to, for round five, single crochet three, and on the fourth stitch we're going to increase. So two, three, and four. 
And on that fourth stitch, we are going to split our yarn. No, we're not. Fourth and fifth. So now that's two stitches on our fourth stitch. One, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. And we've got two more increases. One, two, three, four. We have three more, incre two more increases after this one, excuse me. Four and five. And one, two, three, four. Ah, there you go, little buddy. Usually I have my yarn ball, but my yarn ball bowl. There we go. One, two, three, four, and five, but I just can't find it right now. One, two, three, four, and on this last stitch we're gonna hit five. So there we go. Take our tail and pull that through. We are now going to force rows six through eight. So this is three rounds, six, seven, and eight. We are going to single crochet just around. We're gonna keep going around the same way that we're doing here in the circles, except we're not gonna be doing any increasing. We're just gonna single crochet around those 30 stitches for those three rounds. And then I'll show you how we do the rest of the body and how I do the striping for the body. Also how I attach the eyes. I'll be right back. So exciting times, I found my yarn bowl and I made some tea. So I've gone around three times, one, two, three, rows six, seven, and eight. And for the body, I'm going to be doing some striping. And so, not that part. Yeah, that's what it looks like if you don't do what I am doing here. Um, so this is six, seven, and eight. We're going to nine and 10, do this in black. 11, 12, we're going to do yellow. And 13, 14 is gonna be black. And then 15 is going to be yellow again. And the way that I change my colors, before I go on and on about how, I'm not gonna show you each of the stripes, I'm just gonna show you how I change and alter my colors. I'm going to put my hook through the entire stitch of row um, nine. And I'm going to take my alternate color. So whatever I'm changing my yarn to, as long as, you know, it's not got a giant knot in the very top of it that I don't have patience for. There we go. That's gonna go in my tail ends, which I use for stuffing. Oh, come on, it's everywhere. There we go. I figured it out. We've got black yarn. I'm going to make a tail about two inches long. I'm gonna put it with my finger kind of holding it to the back here. I'm gonna pick that up. I'm gonna pull that through this loop. I'm gonna take that same loop and pull it through the yellow here. So I'm gonna pull that and it's gonna make it a bit more seamless. As you can see, there's a nice straight line as soon as you tighten all your yarn. I'm gonna show you eventually, I'm going to take this tail I'm gonna just do it now. And my active yellow yarn. I don't cut off my yellow yarn because I'm only striping, so I don't ever cut my yarn. I keep it active, my, my yellow yarn active during the entire thing. And I just kind of hold it to the back here. So I'm gonna pick up that and I'm gonna double knot it just to kind of tighten it and secure it in place. So that's gonna sit there and I'm gonna put my yarn kind of holding it over there. I'm going to chain one, and I do this at the beginning of all of my rows, and I'm going to go back inside that same stitch, and I'm going to single crochet one, and now I skip the chain every single time, so that does not count as a stitch. It just helps me kind of like bump up and make it into the next round, and I'm going to just single crochet around and around all 30 stitches, and yeah, it's annoying to have this tail here, but when I go around the next time and I change from nine to 10 into 11 and 12 with the yellow, I just pick it up and then go around like that. And then the same thing with 13, 14 round 
uh, where I have to go back to black, I just pick up the black again and do that. So I'm gonna get the body done where I single crochet around and essentially I'm just crocheting around and changing my colors um, every single time. So I'm gonna go do the body and then I'll show you how I, oh, actually, no, I need to show you where I put the eyes. All right, hold on. I'm gonna finish this round up here real quick and then I'm gonna pick up some 15 millimeters. I always forget my eyes, every time. I have the time, I'll end up doing an amigurumi piece and I'll be like, oh my goodness, I have stuffed, I have finished, I have done the entire dang thing and I forgot to put the safety eyes on. That is the downside to safety eyes is you have to remember exactly when you're doing it, um, when to put it in. It's so frustrating because I just, I'm a ditz and I forget things often. So I am now getting back to the beginning. Actually, I can show you how I go back and how I skip the first chain here. And as you can see, like the yarn is still there. It's still hovering. And even though I found a ball, I can only use a ball for <laughs> each skein. And here we go. This is our last stitch there. No, that's our last stitch. There we go. And now we're gonna go back into the very first single crochet top like there and go in. So I skipped the first chain here. And what I like doing, I'll show you afterwards with the wings. I put the wings over where I um, have my yarn meet. So yeah, that doesn't look amazing. There are better ways to change stripes. And if I wanted to, I could do half rows and do that but I personally don't mind it because I'm going to be using the wings to cover up my uh, work. So here I'm going to actually take my tail out because now I can tell where my, there's my tail, there we go. I can tell that this is now going to be where my rows begin. So I'm going to grab my giant thing. I have an amazing giant thing full of safety eyes. I'm going to grab two pairs of 15 millimeters out of this quick little guy here. I'm also going to grab their little backings. I don't like these ones that I got. I don't know where I got them from, but half of them that look like this don't go on easily and that bothers me. There are some of them that I got from Hobby Lobby and those ones work out well, but these ones are frustrating in that they just don't snap on well. So because I'm putting my wings on top here, I'm going to put my eyes along the sides here. So I like to place them right here along the increasing spots of the um, fifth round, between fifth and sixth round. So six, seven, and eight. So I like to put it in the centers there and I like to kind of just guesstimate. So I'm going to put it I kind of trace it along that way. That way I know that it's still going along the straight area there. I'm not going to be able to put it. And if you have any issues with getting your safety eye in for whatever reason, you can use your crochet hook and kind of put it like in the stitch and kind of wiggle around and it'll make that hole a little bit bigger. So I'm pretty happy with where those eyes are now. I'm going to flip my work like so and you can see where the safety eyes are. I'm trying not to grab any of the tails and I'm gonna just plop that. See, they're really difficult to put on. I had to put a lot of pressure in order to do that. These ones are better than some though. Nope, this wasn't the hard one. There it is. Ha, there you go. I think I got it, but sometimes they don't go on evenly and that's frustrating for me. So some safety eyes are better than others. All right, so now I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna stripe from rounds nine and 10 in black, 11 and 12 in yellow, 13 and 14 in black, and then I'm gonna go around round 15 in yellow, and then I'm gonna start doing my decreases. Be right back. All right, so I finished my striping, and as you can see, it is not the most flawless method uh, of striping. I could do half rows, but again, I'm gonna be covering it up with some wings, so it's not gonna be super apparent anyway so I'm just gonna kind of go with that you could also put it so that that's on its lower belly if you wanted but I'm not going to I've got polyfill everywhere 
the downside of making amigurumi all the time. So now I have finished row 15 and we are going to do some decreasing. We're going to do the exact inverse um, of how we increased. So we're going to start with the larger uh, number. So we're going to decrease our fourth and fifth stitch together and go from 30 stitches down to 24 and then decrease six stitches every single round until we are closed off. And then I'll show you how I close off my final six stitches so that it looks fairly seamless. Um, I'm also gonna show you how I do my decreasing. I single crocheted my first stitch into round 16 and I'm going to go one, two, three, and then four and five are gonna go together. So I'm gonna put my hook inside fourth stitch and then put it also into the fifth stitch, both at the same time, and then I'm gonna single crochet those together like normal, like so. And that creates a nice invisible decrease. You cannot see where the decreases are, which I really like for this amigurumi piece. Actually, I think this one, yeah, this one's got a nicer butt. There we go. As butt, B butts go. Let's go with that. All right. So now we are going to do that again. So one, two, three. And I'm gonna show you again. We go into the fourth stitch and then also into the fifth stitch at the same exact time. Pull my hook through both of them and then wrap and single crochet like normal. I like this method as it just looks a bit more seamless, as I said. Three, and then four and five. One. You could try not to split my yarn. Two. Three. Four and five together at the same time. One. Two. Three. Four and five five together, one, two, three, four, and five. This is my last decrease because I decreased six times. Now we're gonna go from 24 stitches down to 18 and then do that again, 12 and then down to six. So once we get down to six, Again, I'll show you how I pull my yarn through. That's where my darning needle starts coming being in useful. Um, I'm going to, this time, now that we are in round 17, go one and two. And then three, stitch, four stitch. And then decrease that way. One. E one. Try not to split my yarn again. Two three and four together. Trying also not to work my polyfill in with my stitches. One, two, three and four together. One, two, three and four together. One, two, three, and four, one, and this is our last one for this round, two, three, and four. So now we have 18 stitches, and at this point I like to stuff, and then I tend to single crochet and I tend to decrease and stuff at the same exact time. So I'm gonna stuff, I have a tendency to try to stuff um, large and I kind of cup it along the sides. So I first start by kind of patting around the head, making sure that my safety eyes are going straight and don't just kind of get cockeyed and weird. And I'm gonna kind of tuck it along the sides before I start going into the center and trying to push it out that way. 
if that makes sense. Stuffing is my least favorite part of doing any amigurumi piece. I know that this is the part where a lot of people go, but this is when your amigurumi piece comes alive and it starts looking like amigurumi. And I just, I can't, I try to pull my yarn also so that it's definitely cupping the sides because otherwise you get big lumps just along the sides. That's why I kind of start with the sides. But I just don't like... <laughs> stuffing in general. I think it's a pain in the butt. It's a pain in the tuchus. And I'm just not the biggest fan. So I'm going to keep stuffing off camera for a minute. And then I'm going to show you how I do my last decreasing. And I'll be right back. Be right back. Alright, I'm at the point where I'm going to stuff as I decrease. I have made him quite a chubby little bee. Um, and I'm going to be going from... This is now row... 18? 18. There we go. I was on row 17, now I'm on row 18. I'm going to be going from 18 stitches down to 12. And in order to do that, I'm going to single crochet one, and then I'm going to immediately decrease. One. This is hard to show as I get further along. Oh no, I twisted that stitch at some point. Three. There we go. Why the way it's decreased now? One, decrease. Yeah, that's a decrease, there we go. One, decrease. As my safety eyes tap against the desk. One, decrease. I believe I have one more decrease, correct. One, and decrease. I am now down to 12 stitches. I split my yarn there. Oops. There we go. Let's do that decrease one more time just to, you know, for good measure. There we go. I did not split at that time. So now I've got a little bit more that I need to stuff. And this next decrease round, which is our final decrease round, we're going to be going... Actually, I'm going to make that nice go like here. I'm going to decrease every single stitch from 12 down to six. There we go, we're almost there. We're getting there. I think this should actually be it that I need for stuffing. I tried to keep it when I'm towards the end. I try to like tuck it underneath the ridge. That way it's not like just sticking out, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm trying. I hate stuffing and it's my least favorite thing. I'm not an expert at stuffing amigurumi at all. This is just how I go about doing it. I also try to just kind of hold it and push it on its side. This is its top. I'm going to put the wings right there. And now we're going to take our hook, make sure our stitches are going the right way. And we're going to decrease every single stitch. So one, we're going to decrease six times, essentially two, Three, four, trying to keep our polyfill in there, five, and our final one, six. So there's still a giant hole there. How do we fix that? I'm actually going to pull my tail a little bit and I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut my yarn. There we go. I'm going to take my yarn and I'm literally just going to pull it through. I'm not slip stitching off. I'm not doing any of that. I'm going to take my darning needle. Hook is done for right now until I need to go to the wings. And I'm going to take my hook or my needle, excuse me, and I'm going to put it on my, my tail. I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go from the inside, so right here starting from the center, going outward, and I'm going to pull my tail through. Do that again to the next stitch, so two, three, all the way around through each of these stitches. Four and five, and this is technically the last stitch, but I'm also going to go through the top of the stitch again, and I'm going to then pull my tail, 
so as you can see it kind of pulls it nice and tight i like to also take my darning needle and put it through the top of that loose stitch right there and i like to go through my entire there we go work and i like to go through making sure i only go through the yellow part right there i'm gonna pull it i'm gonna pull it again i'm gonna kind of put my thumb over it for a second pull it nice and tight and that is a closed bumblebee butt sounds wrong but i'm going with it either way in order to cut my tails i like to kind of pull them taut a little bit and then to get up real close without getting too much on that stitch i'm gonna cut it and i'm gonna put my tail into my tails bin which i use for stuffing later on a lot of the time so that is how I get rid of my tails and how I make them look nice and seamless. So for the wings, the wings are super simple. They could be a bit more refined, but this is how I make my wings. I end up just doing rounds one through three again, twice. So I create two pieces where they're both um, 18 stitches around. So I increase from six to 12, to 18 just like I did for my bumblebee but then I slip stitch off so I'm gonna show you real quick I'm not gonna go through each of these steps but I just basically I start with my little slip stitch here I'm going to create my chain two just like I did before and I'm going to put six stitches inside that first magical ring one two three oh three four, five, and six. And then I do my increases just like that where I do 12 and then I do 18. I create two of them and I'll show you what I do in order to sew them together and how I attach them to my bumblebee. It is the last sti uh, step. So I'll show you what that looks like in just a moment. Be right back. All right, so I've made two of the wings where I've just gone around um, and increased to 18, so 6, 12, and then 18. I'm gonna cut my tail. I'm gonna leave a nice, decently long tail. Kinda let that go back and be over there. There we go. I slip stitched off, and now I'm just gonna pull my tail like so. I'm going to take my darning needle, and I'm going to actually take these and match them up like so. There we go. So there's a tail on this side and a tail on this side. And I'm gonna go across four of the stitches. I'm gonna go from this way into the center. And then I'm gonna go on the outside on this side and go towards the center. And I'm gonna keep doing that until I reach, not pulling like that, there we go. Until I reach the other side here. I'm trying not to do that. What did I just do? There we go. Trying not to flip my yarn too often. Going across. Going. What have we gone through this one? There we go. It should be about four stitches across. And here. And now that I have sewn these parts to here, I'm actually gonna knot these together like so. And I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm gonna continue to sew, but along the back, just to make it so that it's a bit more firm along this back part here. going back and forth across until I get to the other side. I don't cut these off um, at any point. I'm gonna actually, you can either A, use these tails as soon as you get to the other side for sewing um, onto your work or what I like to do, honestly, is I am lazy and I will use a hot glue gun for this. Oh, this last one's always hard to get through. I'm just gonna go through like that. I'm gonna pull it, kind of pull it tight, make sure that it's like so. See what I mean by like the wings will cover up 
right over where you had your work. I'm gonna take my darning needle and I'm gonna go through the center of this stitch and go down and through my entire work. And then, I'm not gonna have that part right there. There we go. Pull that as tight as I can and you'll see that that pretty much hides it completely. And what I'm gonna do next is, I'm lazy, so I'm gonna take a hot glue gun and I'm actually going to just put a hot glue gun stripe right down there. I'm gonna put it down the center and then I'm gonna take this tail and hide it down my center as well. So I'll be right back as soon as I get that hot glue gun part um, done and dried. I have a tendency to let it try to dry for a while. So that's how I do the wings and I'll be right back once I get that part done. Be right back. All right, so it's the next day. I hot glued my wings on uh, that night. I usually put a little strip of hot glue and then I kind of push it against a wall somewhere. That way it will be pretty seamless. I make sure that my tails over here are pulled as tight as they can before I let it start setting. And now I'm going to take my other tail and I'm going to kind of go underneath the wing as close as I can. I'm going to go through the yellow and pull that through. All right. So that's pretty much all there is to the wings part of this. And then your little emigurumi bee is done as soon as you cut your tails. I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. Uh, you can have issues if you don't do it in a specific order. Like... I believe this bee I had issues with because I didn't put the eyes the right way so now I just have this jagged stripe along the side which is why I really wanted it to be hidden by the wings. It looks a bit more seamless if you have the wings going over on top of it. So that is pretty much all there is to this little amigurumi bee. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. There are more seamless methods of striping. Again, you could do half rows or do something like that. Uh, there's a tons and tons of just other methods that you can do for such a small amigurumi piece, though. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, so let me know what you guys think down below, and I will do more videos like this. I'm actually working on a, it's covered in polyfill, but right now I'm working on a bum, uh, cute little, not bumblebee, this is the bumblebee, uh, ladybug amigurumi. I'm not quite happy with how it's turning out though, so I'll see how this one finishes up. If I want to actually do a ladybug, uh, comment down below if you're interested in seeing one of those. Again, I'm going to be doing my Luna Squish series, which are the little cute ones that I showed in my last video where I was ranting about face masks. And um, go ahead and look over there if you're interested in seeing what a Luna Squish looks like. They're a bit bigger than my Luna babies, so there's that. Um, I'm going to be doing a Kickstarter for a new computer for the channel. So if you're interested in that and some of the rewards that will be associated with that Kickstarter, I'm going to be doing free patterns, free amigurumi, all kinds of stuff over there. So just stay tuned for that in our community tab. And until next time, guys, bye.